In this video, we're going to be studying an important topic called the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The kinetic molecular theory attempts to examine gases on the molecular level. So you can see that each sphere here um, is an atom or a molecule of gas, and then you can see it's moving in um, random straight line directions. So as we do this unit, you want to keep in mind we're going to be looking at gases on the molecular level. So once again, every time we talk about gases and what they're doing creating pressure or collisions, always think about gases as if you're looking at them under a microscope. That will be very helpful for you. All right, here are the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. Gases consist of particles, either atoms or molecules. The distance between the particles is much greater than the size of the particles themselves. Gas particles are in constant random motion. They move rapidly in straight lines and in all directions. Gas particles exert pressure by colliding with the walls of a container. Collisions are elastic. That means no energy is lost during the collision. So I'm going to write that one twice, just so we know this for sure collisions exert a pressure. So when, when you see pressure, think collisions. When you think collisions, also think about pressure. They're the same thing because a gas exerts a pressure by colliding with the walls of the container. Intermolecular and gravitational forces are negligible. You know what gravity means. Gravity tends to pull things down. So all the gas in a room doesn't accumulate at the bottom of the room. You know that's not true. Um, and intermolecular forces, those are forces that exist in between molecules. So in between the atoms or particles of gas, there shouldn't be any forces um, attracting them or repelling them. So intermolecular and gravitational forces are negligible. That means we don't have to worry about them. The temperature of a gas, it has to be in Kelvin, not Celsius, not Fahrenheit, but Kelvin. The temperature of a gas is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the sample. Here's the formula for kinetic energy. We won't be, we won't be really using this, but let's just take a quick look at it. You know that kinetic energy, Ke, that's the energy of motion. So the more motion something has, the more kinetic energy it has. So the kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass of the gas, times the velocity of the gas squared. So the more velocity the gas has, the more kinetic energy it has. And we just learned that the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the sample. So the faster the gas molecules are moving, the more kinetic energy they have, therefore the higher temperature they have. So fast moving gas molecules have a higher temperature. Here's the formula for converting degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So whatever the temperature is in Celsius, add 273 degrees. So if the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, that's about room temperature. 20 plus 273 would be 293 Kelvin. So all of your gas conversions, this unit, have to be in Kelvin got that? All of our gas calculations involve temperatures in Kelvin. Okay, let's draw a container with a sample of gas inside. And we want to follow the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. So here's our container. And we just learned that gas molecules consist of atoms or molecules. So they're tiny particles. And the distance between the particles is much greater than the size of the particles themselves. We also learned that gas molecules move in constant random motion, and they move in straight lines. So these little whooshies after the gas molecule are showing that the gas molecule is moving, and it's moving in straight lines. We also learned that gas molecules exert a pressure by colliding with the wall of their container. So you can see that this gas molecule here experiences a collision. It collides with the inside wall of this container. And as it collides with the inside wall, what does it do? 
That's right, it exerts a pressure because collisions equal pressure. So this gas exerts a pressure when it collides with the walls of the container. And we know the intermolecular and gravitational forces, uh, we can ignore those. So of course we don't see the gas gathering here at the bottom of the container. That doesn't happen. Okay. How could the picture be modified to increase the pressure? Now remember, I told you, you want to think about everything as if it's on the microscopic level. So how could we increase the pressure in here? Now as soon as you heard the word pressure, I know that you thought of collisions because collisions equal pressure. So how can we increase the number of collisions? Well, here's a few ways. We could decrease the volume. If we shrink the size of this box, well, there'll simply be more collisions because the box will be smaller and these molecules will be colliding with the walls of the container more frequently. How else could we increase the pressure? Well, if we increase the temperature, you know that the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. So if we heat these gas molecules up, they will move faster. And faster moving molecules means that the collisions will be more frequent and more forceful. You got that? So if these gas molecules are moving faster, they'll collide more often with the walls of these containers and probably collide with more force because they're moving faster. Lastly, we could increase the number of moles. If we could somehow inject more gas molecules in here, well, of course, that would create more collisions. So that would create more pressure as well. So all of the variables needed to define a gas are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. We'll be using these four variables all unit long. So this was an overview of the kinetic molecular theory.